Okay, thank you for joining Hydrocephalus Canada tonight and welcome to the Learn How to Network webinar. I'm Shauna Bodeway, the Director of Programs and Information at Hydrocephalus Canada. I will share moderator duties for tonight's webinar with HC's Community Support Coordinator, Andrea Walters. She'll be in the background uh, monitoring the chat and answering any technical questions you may have. Participants through networking strategies, the goal is for participant participants to be able to describe the difference between networking and job hunting, learning how to send a connection request on LinkedIn, how to identify when to reach out to your network for help or to share information and to keep track of connections. Our presenter this evening is Suzanne Huggins. Ms. Huggins is a communications change management and learning and development leader with experience managing new technology, wealth management, and human resources projects in Canada's big five banks. She holds a Bachelor of Journalism from Carleton University and postgraduate certificates in information systems management. Canadian Securities, Corporate Communications and Organizational Change Management. Suzanne is currently the Incident Communications Manager for Scotiabank Global Technology Services. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Shauna. Thanks for having me this evening. And welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, tonight's topic is on how to uh, build and nurture your network. Um, I was very lucky early on in my career. I, uh, I, I happened upon a mentor who was also interested in uh, networking and building out a bit of a mentoring circle. Um, but as a result of her encouragement, because I was a little bit shy um, when I was um, earlier starting off in my career, with her encouragement and coaching, um, I was able to build out a fairly large and successful network using some of, some of the techniques and strategies that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I'm anticipating that there's going to be a, quite a bit more, uh, quite a bit of interaction. I understand that some questions have already come in and Shauna is gonna help me address those as we go along. All right, so this is just a little bit about me. Um, my experience is on the left-hand side. Um, it's legitimate. I, as a co-op student, I did work for the Toronto Blue Jays and I'm a monster fan, but I have also worked at uh, Canada's big five banks. My favorite space within um, banking is technology and operations. And so I tend to gravitate towards those types of roles. I've also had um, a successful stint in wealth management as well as in learning and development. And that's where my background comes from. My formal education is on the right-hand side. I'm what you would call a lifelong learner. It's a little bit addictive for me, but I, I love learning new things. And so that is something that I focus on and I dedicate some of my personal time and resources to. What we're gonna be talking about tonight uh, is how networking is different from finding a job. And although the two are related, um, building a network is separate from a job search. So the two, the two are different. Um, we're going to look at how to build your network successfully, how to nurture your network, so to keep it active and keep it maintained. And then we're going to finish off with a little bit of an activity. Um, if you don't already have one, maybe maybe take a moment and grab um, a piece of paper and a pencil because I'm going to I'm going to get you started on organizing, building your own network. And I've got a takeaway for you as well tonight. Hopefully you're game for this. We're trying a little bit of an, an interactive activity. Uh, I'm going to be checking for questions at the end, and I know that Shauna um, is monitoring questions as well, and, as well as Andrea. All right, so as we discussed, building your network is not a job search. Um, a network, I, when I think of my network <clears throat> and the way it's grown over you know, the course of my career and over the course of my different sort of academic endeavors, a network I think of as a large group of friends and I might not see them regularly and I might not communicate with them regularly, but we do have our channels to get in touch with one another. Um, I'm a monster fan of LinkedIn. It's kind of like the professional Facebook for me in, in terms of keeping track and staying in touch with the folks who I've loved working with over the years, but maybe don't currently work with or haven't talked to in a while. Uh, with a network, there is a give and take 
uh, relationship. So it's terrific to just know a lot of people, but it's not just a matter of knowing a lot of people and expecting them to feed you information or to help you out with things that you might need. There is a, there is a give component to that as well. And in, you know, I think of it as paying it forward, but in identifying sort of what the interests are of the people in your network and the value proposition that you can bring to those people, you're able to satisfy both your, your need and your desire to maintain that relationship and keep it warm and also help, help them out when, they, when maybe they're looking for help. The end goal of your network is to simply maintain a relationship. The end goal is not necessarily to get a job, but by virtue of maintaining the relationship, it increases your likelihood of identifying new career opportunities or new any sort of other development or relationship opportunity. Um, I want throughout this session tonight. I I was talking about it with um, with Andrea yesterday. I thought I'd share some stories, and one of one of the ones that I thought might resonate is. Back when I was a student, so I had finished, you know, I was in like my my postgraduate certificate in corporate communications and my very first job was like grunt level, entry level um, public relations coordinator. So I was the person who who filed press releases when any of our clients got um, in the media. Like I literally there was scissors and newspapers and there was clippings and putting them in scrapbooks. Um, because we weren't digital at the time, um, call, you know, faxing out with the fax machine, faxing out uh, news releases, media releases to try and garner media attention for our clients. Um, I, I was that person, but I was in a, a mid-sized public relations agency, and I worked with a number of different people who were super fun. And so one of the benefits of this, I, you know, it paid very little, but on Friday nights, we always got to go out and one of our big clients was Labatt. And so the, the fellow who had the Labatt account brought his card. So we got to jump the line to get into the club every night. Um, and it was super fun. Anyway, that was, that was easily 25 years ago. Two years ago, um, and it was through LinkedIn, um, a fellow who I work with, his name is David. He reached out to me on LinkedIn um, because he found me through my maiden name and said, you know, Suzanne, I don't know if you remember me, but we work together at this public relations agency. I noticed that you have this change management certificate. Can you tell me more about it? Because I'm interested in it. And one of the philosophies that I followed because of all of the help that I've had in my career and just simply because I enjoy meeting other people, I always believe in sort of, if someone comes to me for help, I'm gonna help them. And it didn't matter that I hadn't talked to David in over 20 years. He was asking me a question and I remember back when I was, you know, a new grad, he was nice to me. So I sent him a bunch of information about the change management certificate I'd completed. And the, re the, re the reciprocity was he gave me the name of two um, recruiters who I had not been in touch with because at the time I was contracting independently. And so I was, I was finding work based on sort of contractual relationships instead of being full-time permanent which is what most of my career had been. So he put me in touch with two people that resulted in um, potential job opportunities. But that's an example of, you know, that network had gone cold. Again, I hadn't talked to David in probably over 20 years, but because we were connected on LinkedIn, um, the, the relationship, it was, it was giant air quotes here, semi-warm, and, and I was able to help him out. There are, other, there are other examples, you know, through the course of this session that I'm gonna talk about, but it's just one of those examples of kind of paying it forward. 20 years ago, David was really nice to me. And as a student, he gave me some experience that I was able to put on my resume, um, supporting him on his client accounts. And so now if he's got a change management question, you bet I'm going to help him out. So the benefits of networking, again, the end goal is not necessarily finding a job. It's the sharing of information. So you benefit from acquiring information and you also benefit from paying it forward and helping someone else um, who may down the road, who may be down the road, will be inclined to help you as well. You're going to learn new skills, uh, whether it is getting advice on a course that maybe you're considering taking that you, you're not sure about. You can reach out to your network to ask about it. If there's someone who you think has done an exceptionally good job of managing their career, or maybe you think of as being particularly successful or maybe polished, 
you can ask them. So I've noticed that that you're very good at presenting. You you don't get flustered. How did you develop that skill set? You can ask them those types of questions to develop your own skill set. Uh, certainly maintaining support supportive relationships. That's been a big one. You know, we can think about COVID because that's the immediate the immediate example. But there are plenty of other examples. You know, when I when I came back from mat leave, um, some of some of my immediate professional relationships were a bit cold because I hadn't seen folks in a year and we hadn't kept in touch. But the people who were also interested in maintaining me as a connection, they they were able to. You know, they were very supportive when I was coming back to work. And then lastly. Um, I don't think really of my network as being, you know, we largely we have professionalism in common. Like at some point, we've probably all worked together in communications, organizational change management, learning and development, or probably wealth management technology. But I think of them as being a large circle of, of friends who I genuinely like, and, and hopefully they like me too. But by, but by maintaining that mindset, I can approach it with some empathy and some warmth, and it's not just simply a professional transaction. So now we're going to get into the tactics of building and nurturing your network. You know, there aren't a lot of words on the slide because it, I think it's pretty straightforward. The, the challenge, or at least the hurdle that many people feel who I speak to is not what they need to do, it's how they feel about doing it. And so we're going to talk about that, and then I'm going to set, try and set you up for success um, in a few minutes because we've got an activity that we're going to get you going on if you already don't um, sort of have the inclination to, to start nurturing your network. So the first thing is, you know, straight up, you meet someone new. This could be anywhere. You could be chatting with someone in line at the grocery store. Uh, you could be at a Hydrocephalus Canada event. You could be at um, a baseball game and of course baseball right but you, you could be at a baseball game or a hockey game and you're just sitting to someone next who seems to be as big a fan as you are you strike up a conversation and that's that's all you need to do if you end up liking each other um and and if you you seem to have things in common it's okay to say hey you know my name my name is suzanne huggins i really enjoyed getting to know you tonight um would you, would you like my would you like my contact information um i really enjoy meeting new friends and if you offer them that information, it doesn't put pressure on them to then reciprocate unless they feel like doing it. Um, not everyone is as, as keen to sort of make friends or build a professional relationship as you may be or as, as I am. But by offering your information first, that, that may put them at ease. And then lastly, once you get their information, absolutely follow up with them because then if you don't immediately, the relationship is going to go cold. So if you happen to exchange email addresses, or even if you just say, oh yeah, my name is so-and-so, or the, the person that you're trying to connect with um, says, oh yeah, my name is so-and-so, I'm on LinkedIn, get onto LinkedIn, or you know, if they give you your email address, get on there like later that day or the next morning at the latest and say, hi, we met at such and such an event. Um, it was great to meet you. You know, if you're if you're interested, here's where I work, here are some of my interests. Whatever that commonality is that the two of you identified when you first met, that's that's your springboard. That's your platform to, to sort of build a little bit of a relationship. And after that, there might be a little bit of back and forth. It might be weeks or months before you hear from that person again. But if you find something in the meantime that, that you know will interest them or you suspect will interest them, you can just send them that information, um, something that... So uh, I'm trying to, so something that I do, it's in my internal network. Uh, Scotiabank has a workplace by Facebook, which, was, which is sort of the internal networking platform within larger organizations. And something that I've started doing is on my personal blog, I just start publishing things about um, operational communications, organizational and strategic communications, because that's where the lion's share of my career has been. So I put it out in the universe and, you know, I have a few followers, but the point is not necessarily to get the followers. The point is to put it out there um, and let people know these are my interests. I hope you're following me. And then when someone follows me, I also follow them. So it's that reciprocal relationship. Um, so that's an example of sharing and the value of sharing. Um, keeping the relationship warm is ensuring that, you know, if 
if someone's following you, it's probably a good idea to follow them as well. Um, also, if you haven't heard from someone in a while, and I've got a few examples when we get to the activity, if you haven't heard from someone for a while and you want to keep the relationship warm, send them an email at their last email address. If you've got their phone number, give them a phone call um, and let them know that you're thinking about them, you're checking in, and um, you just want to say hi. And then lastly, um, so I'm a firm believer, and it, it might sound a little bit preachy, but whenever I'm mentoring or whenever um, I sort of am asked to give career advice, the three most important important phrases in business, in my opinion, are please, thank you, and I'm sorry. And knowing when to say those three things goes a long way to your credibility and in strengthening relationships with other people. So if you need something from someone, say please. If you've made a mistake um, or if you've done something maybe that has that was detrimental to the other person, know when to say sorry and, and own it. Um, and then lastly, say thank you. And thank you can take many forms. Sometimes it's simply saying Thank you. I really appreciate your help. Um, you know, a handwritten note goes a long way if you have the ability to give someone a handwritten note or certainly an email that at least the person can file away and they'll remember that, that this is something that you, you were grateful for and you appreciated that they did. Please, thank you. And I'm sorry. So we've moved now to the activity portion. This is pretty interactive and I'm going to be very disappointed if I don't get responses from the folks who are on the webinar tonight. So I'm hoping, and let's take a minute. Um, I'm hoping you've got a paper and pen. And this is what I would like you to do. I'd like you to write down the names of five people who you don't speak with or haven't spoken to regularly for a little while. So, you know, ideally these will be friends or maybe people who you went to school with, perhaps people you don't, you uh, used to work with but haven't been in touch with for a while. And then next to each person's name, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like in a minute. So these are the instructions and then I'll show you what it, the end result is. Um, put a name down next, put a date down next to each name, ideally between now and next Friday because if we don't do it immediately, um, it's gonna go stale and we wanna giddy up and do this. So put a date down next to each person's name and then write down a conversation topic next to each name. Now networking, and again, I'm thinking back to when I first started meeting new people and becoming a little bit more confident and getting to know people, you don't always know what to talk about and it doesn't always need to be work. Uh, it doesn't always need, for me, I tend to, I tend to gravitate towards baseball. A lot of my professional relationships are actually based on our mutual love of baseball. And then we find out later that we also enjoy working together. But what, whatever it is that you've got in common with this person. Um, and then your, your activity, your takeaway activity is to contact each person on your list by that date. And you can do it by email, you can do it by a phone call, by a LinkedIn message, or maybe a text message. However you're, however you're most comfortable contacting, with that, contacting that person, that's your takeaway to do that. Now, these are the instructions. Um, and I don't expect you to write all this down because I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the next page. All right, so this is what, this is what my networking chart looked like. Um, on the, you know, the first column, I've got the name of the person I'm reaching out to. So Mo is my, one, of my, one of my former bosses. He's actually my favorite boss of all time, you know, and I've got it to date to contact him by, by, um, you know, by the sec, by, sorry, by February 2nd. And I'm going to talk to him about how to be a good boss, because I recently had a conversation with my current boss, who I like, you know, she's good. But you know, it always comes up that Mo was my favorite. So I, you know, I think I'm going to call Mo and tell him, just remind him, you know, Mo, you're still my favorite. Here are all the reasons why. And on the final column, you know, I've done a little bit of a pretend mock-up. So I've indicated, yes, I have contacted Mo. Colin is a former coworker. Um, I learned recently through Facebook that a member of his family has passed away and he's got two boys in their, in, uh, their early twenties. I, I wanna see how he's doing, check in, and if there's anything that I can do to help him or his family. So I've left him a voicemail. Charlotte and I used to run together. I don't run anymore. Um, I decided that it just hurt too much. Uh, but I used to really love it. And I, I put in a lot, a lot of kilometers with Charlotte. So I'm going to get, I'm going to reach out to her. 
I really miss running. You know what, Charlotte, I really miss you too. Let's get together for a virtual happy hour soon. So we'll have some, we'll have some refreshments probably online and, and we'll chat about um, things that are going on in our lives. I'm going to, I'm going to take ownership to schedule that because I really would like it to happen. And so I'm, I'm happy to do that. Amy and I used to play in the band together in high school. It's been a while. I played the clarinet. Amy also played the clarinet. So um, the last I heard she'd had a baby. Um, I'm going to reach out to her and see how she's doing. And then Jody and I graduated from university together. She lives in Ottawa um, and she and I get together from prior to COVID. We got together maybe once a year. I want to know how it's going. And you know what? It looks like the lockdown hopefully is going to be lifting again and we'll be able to get together because we'd like to plan a spa weekend. Um, I'm going to reach out to Jody. And the last time we talked, she was interested in learning more about financial planning. Now, I'm not a financial planner, but I work at a bank and, and I learn stuff. So, Jody, you know what? Let's bring a whiteboard and we'll mock up some things in terms of what you might want to do. If, um, if financial planning is something that's of interest to you, or like investments, whatever. It's mainly, we're going to have a good time. Fundamentally, she and I enjoy like facilitating and whiteboarding. So we may just draw stick pictures. But the point is that we're going to have a whiteboard. So that's my, that's my networking chart. And I've probably taken a little bit more time than I expected to go through it. But I wanted to explain the, you know, the degree of the relationships and the degrees of separation. So most of these people I haven't spoken with in probably a couple of months. Uh, Amy, even longer. Amy, I probably haven't spoken to in about a year, but I want to reach out and see how it's going. And then on the right hand side, just to help me keep track, I've indicated, OK, yep, I've contacted, contacted Colin. I've left a voicemail for. So this is my activity for you. Please, um, in order in order to make this stick, in order to, order to get you up in the saddle for um, for networking, please make a chart similar to this. Identify the folks that you want to contact. On the bottom left of the screen, I provided my contact information. So if you're kind of struggling, or maybe maybe you think you don't have anyone to network it with, you now know that you have one. You have me. So um, I've given you my Hotmail account because that's my professional account that that I'll be able to look for you in. And LinkedIn, this is my LinkedIn profile. So get me on LinkedIn and you can reach out and you can say, hi, um, I attended your Hydrocephalus Canada session. You know, would you like to connect? Something to that extent. And that will get you up and running. And I will respond back and I'll make sure that you'll have at least one relationship that, um, that you'll keep warm in your network. Now, that's the activity. I'll be so, and let me and let me just say, I will be so sad if no one does this. So please, just for the sake of my own feelings, just give, give it a shot. And if you only connect with one person, please, please let it be me because then I'll feel like the activity was worthwhile. Now that's, that's the end of my presentation. Um, the thing with networking, like we've talked about the tips and you'll have the deck. The thing with networking is to, is to simply get it going and your, your comfort level will increase the more you do it. Um, and you'll get into the habit of maintaining these warm relationships as you go along. Um, I, I'm a big believer in it. I certainly was shy when I started, but I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I did. Shauna, I understand that there might be some questions coming in. There are. <clears throat> and the first one is what does a warm or cold connection mean? Okay, so that's a great question. So a cold, so the example that I used earlier on in the session, um, my friend, my, my former coworker, David, who I hadn't heard from in 20 years, is that a warm connection or is it a cold connection? I would call that a cold connection. So certainly I remember David, but we hadn't had any interaction in over 20 years. Um, so that, that was cold. A warm one is one that maybe, so I'm trying to think, so my friend, my friend Alexis, Alexis and I, initially worked together in 2006 and we have a very similar skill set so actually she was leaving a job that I was coming into and before she left I ended up just scheduling her for coffee to find out how I could be successful in this job because I really wanted to be successful and so she she agreed to have coffee with me and we've been friends ever since but I haven't talked to Alexis personally in probably 18 months, but we, we email periodically and we've shared recipes. So that's an example of a warmer relationship. Now, Charlotte and I, 
we used to run together, but I also know that Charlotte has an interest in, you know, continuing continuous education and, and learning. And she took a course uh, last year through a university, like one of those, um, you know, six to eight week courses. And I wanted to see if she enjoyed it and what she got out of it, because I was also considering taking um, a similar course. So that's another example of a warmer relationship where not as much time has passed. So maybe in the chat, if you could indicate you sort of, if that gives a good idea of what a cold relationship is versus a warm relationship, that would be terrific. Cause then I'll know I've hit the mark. The response is yes, thank you. No, thank you. And thank you for that question. And the next question is how do I get over the fear of being a bother? Uh, so, when I think about that, if you're, if you're reaching out, if, so I'm going to think of probably an example that might resonate. And if it's not, then you can steer me in a different direction. So if you've applied for a job and you haven't heard anything, hi, I'm just following up. Hi, I'm just following up. Hi, I'm just following up. If they haven't told you that they've made a decision or if they haven't told you that I'm really so sorry, um, you were a strong candidate, but we've taken a different direction. That's that's the other person's fault. So specifically when it comes to looking for a job, you're not a bother following up because it's the job of the other person to tell you where you stand. Um, and I feel I feel pretty strongly about that. When it comes to just maintaining a relationship, this is where having a reciprocal relationship might might make you feel more confident in the difference between um, being friendly or being a bother. So it's not just a matter of, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Tell me how you did this. Help, 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 me, me, me. It's also, hey, I found out, um, hey, I understand that you really enjoy cooking. I've discovered that the CBC over their website releases monthly recipes and they're really good. Here's the link. So by maintaining that reciprocity and demonstrating that you're not just a taker, but you're also a giver, it will, you're not going to be a bother because it's a, it's, it's a two-way relationship. It's not just a take relationship, it's a two-way relationship. And you're contributing as much as um, you're asking for in return. That's a great tip. Okay, next question. What are some of the differences, if any, from networking online to in-person? Uh, so this is this is a hard question for me because I've been online for two years. I don't remember. Um, it's hard for me to remember networking in person. And I'll tell you, even when I go to the grocery store, um, I feel awkward just being out in the world. Like I totally get dressed up, makeup, hair, everything. And I'm like, I'm going to the grocery store. But when it comes to differences, um, back in back in the old days when before COVID, reach, reaching out um, and and just talking to someone in person, it's I think that it's important to sort of maintain that that demeanor of being approachable and being being friendly. Online, you have the opportunity, you know, whether it's through a chat group, again, you know, LinkedIn is an example, but also Facebook. Like if I if there's um, so, okay, so Facebook, we're playing this game. I don't know if ever, anyone's heard of Wordle. Wordle, yes. is this, Wordle is this great, this game that a bunch of my friends from high school are playing now. And I've got, I've got a terrific friend um, named Mark. And so every morning I count on Mark to post the Wordle riddle and a bunch of us, including his brother and some other friends from high school and some other people I don't know, we go in and we solve the Wordle riddle and then we post to see how we did. and you know, I'm not a very athletic person. I'm not fast. I'm not strong, but I'm really good at, you know, I'm a writer. So I'm really good at language. Right. So I'm like, okay, I can compete at Wordle. So an online relationship, um, one of the people who also participates in Wordle every day, and this is a long story, I apologize, but that online relationship, there's someone else that posts on Wordle every day on, on my friend Mark's profile who I've never met but they're awesome. Like they're better than I am at Wordle. So I've reached out to this person. I'm like, how did you do this? Um, and so we've set, we've started a little bit of like a chat on Facebook. Um, there are other, you know, there are other examples in the past year, um, you know, through LinkedIn, I've, I've got a fairly built out profile. So I've had a couple of people, not necessarily recruiters, but people who've reached out and said, simply said, I looked at your profile 
it seems to be very similar to mine. Would you like to connect? And so I, I will say, yeah, I'll go on, I'll, I'll read about them. And I'm, oh, you know what? She's right. She does have a very similar career, career path and, and skill set to mine. This could be interesting. And so I'll connect with them. So, you know, it's, it's sort of be, being polite, demonstrating that you have um, taken some time to get to know this person or their profile, um, whether it's through Facebook or whether it's through uh, workplace or whether it's through LinkedIn uh, or any other sort of uh, community group, whether it's Instagram, um, that you, you that you've taken some time to identify this other person's interests, and that when you respond and you introduce yourself, you can say, you know, what I notice maybe on Instagram you post a lot of pictures on such and such. I've actually been there, and you're the only other person I know who's ever visited that place. Um, this is terrific. And then it's that it's it's identifying that commonality and then reaching out um, virtually as opposed to in person. Okay. Uh, and just myself thinking, you know, how I used to network in person is, you know, I used to attend a lot of information fairs on behalf of the organization. So whoever was in the booth next to me, I would start up a conversation and it usually led to um, us knowing the same uh, organizations or working with the same organizations or even finding out that you know, what we do and what they do is very similar and that could provide um, partnerships. So I'm just thinking like in person, you can always start a conversation somehow. Next question. And I guess this is somewhat similar to what you just answered, but how to network in lockdown? All right, so um, I, I would say it's very similar to networking online because we don't have the same interact like in-person channels as we would outside of lockdown. You know, if you if you have an active life online through any of the sort of social media networks, whether it's Twitter, and you know what, I forgot to mention Twitter, but Twitter is another one. Um, you know, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, my daughter is into TikTok, so I can't speak knowledgeably about TikTok, but apparently it's a thing where you can do things with your friends. Um, whatever, whatever channel that is that you're comfortable with, that, that's how you're going to network instead of being sort of the face-to-face -face in person. And I'm so looking forward to the day when we can actually congregate and be together safely and actually interact with other human beings. Um, I'm probably going to need some time to adapt to it because it's been so long, but if there's one, maybe one difference, you know, you know what those channels are now, you probably have your own um, sort of social media or other channels that where you like to connect with people, even the telephone, like pick up the phone. But the key thing is to, to do that, to be the person who takes the step instead of waiting for someone else to take the step, because the person who, who you contact with will probably be delighted to hear from you. Some people don't think about it. Some people don't think about, oh, I need, I haven't talked to, I haven't talked to Sean in a really long time. I'm going to call her. And I, and instead of thinking, well, I'm not going to bother Shauna and call her. I'm like, I'm just, just going to call her. And Shauna will probably be really glad to hear from me um, or Andrea or Colin or Mo. They'll be really glad to hear from me because, you know, they, they would never have thought of doing it, but you thought of doing it. And so it's a really nice, it's a nice gesture. It's a friendly gesture. So next question, how to effectively use LinkedIn as a tool? So All right. Was, I okay. Guess. Um, <laughs> so, so people use LinkedIn for different things. Um, the way that I, so I'm going to go back to that example. The two, so there was David who after 20 years reached out to me, like he and I had a relationship though. So like I knew him, even though I hadn't talked to him in 20 years, I remembered him as being someone who, who I used to work with. And so that was, that wasn't a complete sort of cold contact, but the two people over the summer who contacted me, hi, my name is so-and-so. I noticed that you and I have very similar skill sets. I was wondering if you'd be able to, if you would like to connect and maybe we can share information or, you know, maybe, maybe down the road, this relationship will benefit, be mutually beneficial. So that's, that's, you know, without just being saying, hi, I see something I'm interested in that you've done. Can you be my friend or can you connect? It's like, it's, it's 
presenting the value proposition of, I've read your profile. What you've done is really interesting. Here's what I've done. I think that I think it might be mutually beneficial for us to to connect. And if there's any sort of piece of information that I ever come across that will be of use to you, I will share it. Oh, by the way, and if you've got it, you know, here's my blog. Or by the way, here's my profile where I often post or repost information from my own network. So, in reaching out to LinkedIn, it's not sort of the the cold call that where you're you're just contacting a stranger because maybe there's something that's in it for you. It's what's in it for both of you. And that's a value proposition that will increase the likelihood that the other person will, will connect with you. Okay. I hope I, next... hope I hope I answered that question. I think so. Okay. I think that was a great answer. Um, and this next question kind of asks more about the cold networking. So Michelle would like to know, how do I utilize the various channels online to tackle cold networking? So I think that what would help me answer that question is understanding, and then maybe, you know, we don't need to do this right now, but <clears throat> think about what, what is the reason behind the cold networking? So when I think of people who cold contact me, whether it's through my job or it's through my professional network through LinkedIn or even Facebook, it's often because they're selling something. Um, I, you know, perhaps you, perhaps you are in a situation where you're cold contacting someone um, because maybe they're hiring and you're a job candidate, or maybe someone's got a job that you'd like to learn more about. And, you know, I don't think that the process would be that different then. It's like, hello, I've read, you know, I've read your profile or, you know, I've learned about you through such and such um, a friend or through such and such an event. And I, would, I, I really admire, or I'm very interested in, in what you've accomplished. Would you, would you mind connecting? And so whether, whether it's through LinkedIn or through Facebook or through Instagram or through whatever other um, channel or even an exchange of emails, whatever other channel you have to connect with, it's, it's respectfully asking that person if they'd mind, but also demonstrating that you've taken the time to sort of see what your interests are. And it's not just that maybe they've got something that you want. It's also thinking in advance of what might you have to bring to the relationship so that it can be mutually beneficial. Okay. And even if that's just like being a friend, you know, um, even if it, 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 mutually beneficial doesn't necessarily mean, oh, well, if you help me with this professional thing, I will help you with that professional thing. It's more a matter of, well, I'm really trying to develop my skill set here, but what I have to offer is, and you can think of something. I know, I know a lot about, I see you have pictures of dogs on your profile. Well, I know, I know a lot about dogs and I've had great success training them through my volunteer work or whatever, like I'm just trying to think of other sort of reciprocal things you can offer. It doesn't always need to be like a straight, um, it doesn't have to always be transactional. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, I'm gonna actually click on her name and see if um, we can allow her to talk. We'll see if she's interested in that. Okay. Oh, actually, she said thank you. So I think you made a, might have answered her question. Okay, thanks. And you know what? You, you've got my contact information now. So if you want to follow up with me, um, please, please, by all means, we can keep the conversation going. Perfect. Uh, the next question, what is the most positive way of networking that would lead to more connections? Um, so... When I think about, there's a couple of things. So, and they're completely, they're completely divergent. Um, the first is I, I seemed to have met a lot of people when I was running a lot. So I used to run out of the running room and they have these free running clinics on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday evenings. And the same people would show up um, every Sunday morning and every Wednesday evening. And we found that we trained for the same races. But I'll tell you, when you're training for a long race, you're putting in a lot of kilometers and you're in a group. And so you're going to end up with people who are maybe at the same speed as you are. My speed is slow. So I was with all the slow people, but we also talked about cooking and we talked about our kids and we talked about um, television that we all like to watch. Um, and then we talked about cooking some more because that was a big thing. But 
just the nature of that activity um, resulted in making more contacts. And the coincidence was that we also were all very interested in running. Another example that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use it second because it's just coming up. Uh, at the beginning, you saw I'm kind of a lifelong learner. I really enjoy um, taking new courses. And next week, I'm starting a, um, a, an eight-week program at U of T Rotman on a particular subject. So I'm really looking forward to that because I'm going to be put into, um, you know, I'm going to have like my independent my independent tasks we're going to have group discussion online like nothing's in person still but we're going to have group discussions online but i'm going to meet a whole bunch of people who i've never met before um, i've probably never worked with them before but we all have this particular topic in common and i'm crazy looking forward to meeting them all so that's another way of in a group setting it's a different kind of group setting but we're going to we're going to be virtual but we're going to build that network and as we get to know each other we're going to connect through email. We're going to connect through LinkedIn. We're going to connect through the chat groups at U of T that we're going to be required to participate in. That's another example of how you can sort of build out your network. Um, so there's that there's that like in person side, and there's sort of the the virtual side as well. Okay. And then and then um, volunteer activities. So you know I work for a large multinational organization. All of the banks have volunteer sort of initiatives that where we give back to the community in different ways. I've met a ton of people through my career um, sort of volunteering for those types of activities as well. Um, any, any, any activity like that, you're going to have an opportunity to meet a bunch of people. Agreed. And, you know, we have support groups through Hydrocephalus Canada too, and that's a great way to meet new people and, and make connections. And I'm not sure if, if this really works with the topic that we're discussing, but how does age take part in being hired? I wish I had an answer to that question. So I think that, you know, many employers, age doesn't take it or it should not um, be factored into hiring. Absolutely, there are laws against it. Uh, and, you know, I, I believe in my heart that, the, you know, the big five banks, Scotiabank included, um, don't take age into account when it comes to hiring practices. Um, okay. You know, yeah, I just, the, and there, there are laws against it. So I, I, I don't, I probably am not in the best position to answer that question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that looks like the end of the questions for this session. Um, again, anyone that has participated tonight, if you have other questions, you can either send them to us at info at hydrocephalus.ca or you can contact Suzanne directly at I-Z-Z-A-R-S at hotmail.com. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us again this, this evening. Th um, thank you. Wonderful thank presentation. You. Lots thank of great information. Thank you. I hope it was helpful. And I really do. I encourage people to start, start building out their networks. And if, you know, and if you're at a loss of where to start, start with me, you've got my contact information and then go from there.